Oh God, what's this noise? So loud. Aquilius? What the fuck, Aquilius? What the fuck? I originally came up with the concept for this video in mid-2019. Back then it already seemed like Brexit would stop sizzling down and relationships could improve again. However, I was obviously very wrong, and Brexit has somehow still remained relevant into 2020. Good going, UK. Good going. But this is not a Brexit video. Otherwise, I wouldn't be unique in any way. And me obviously being Mr. Quilius Epic, I tend to be a little bit unique. If I'm a wacky stuff. <laughs> You are now currently watching The Mr. Epic Show. My semi-educational, weird real-life kind of videos where I try to bring out a message despite being an utter twat myself. So, without further ado, I would like to go into the British-European relationship throughout history. I won't go as far back as Stonehenge and the Cape Men because, let's be real here, I don't think we need to start talking about that. They would even be lucky if they knew that there was something on the other end of the sea, so I would assume. They got over the channel somehow and started settling in England and start placing some stones somewhere. That's as far as I can imagine the earlier relationship between Britain and Europe being. However, to a civilised world, Britain was already known being referred to in Greek maps of their period as the Tin Isles due to their trading relationships with the Greek colonies and Phoenicians and similar trading empires in exporting tin. After that, to the European mainland, Britain has remained rather irrelevant apart from the combined culture of Celtic tribes in the area, crossing over from Brittany and Gaul into the British Isles. However, the next big spur of relevance between Europe and Britain would be when Gaius Julius Caesar himself decided to have a little holiday there. In the years 55 to 54 BC, Caesar himself or Kaiser, I guess I should pronounce it. K Kaiser, yeah, because the Romans pronounced it with a K. Excuse me, I said Caesar, like a salad. I mean, I'm thick, okay? I like my food. And even Caesar salad works. Julius K Kaiser. I'll just say Caesar! Crap, damn it, I don't care now. Caesar! Julius Caesar went over to Britain in 55 to 54 BC. However, conquest for this time, for a change, considering he was so busy with Gaul at the time, was not his main goal. Instead, he just wanted to go over there, see how things were like, expand the Roman sphere of influence, of course, and demand tribute from local tribes. However, the goal of complete subjugation would not come from Caesar himself, and even under Augustus, the first Roman emperor, it was seen as more profitable to increase trade relations and to keep a balance of power between the local tribes on the British Isles, instead of just subjugating them. The first actual invasion attempt of the British Isles in 43 AD, however, was cancelled due to mutinies. I mean, it's obvious, who wants to go to Britain anyway? We have potholes everywhere, we eat stuff as like fried Mars bars and stuff, like, who wants to go to England anyway? 43 AD did, however, mark the beginning, despite delays, of total conquest of Britain, or at least of what we would call England today. It was a long and harsh war, time of lots of cruelties, a lot of bloodshed, a lot of sword fighting, a lot of Roman chanting, I assume. And in 84 AD, the province of Britannia reached its largest size. Around that time, the Romans also had to come to terms with the fact that occupying Scotland was not worth their while. I mean, it's cold up there, there's nothing but woods and forests, and people wearing weird skirts, so who would want to settle in Scotland anyway? Okay, jokes aside, I love Scotland. I made a whole video about that way back in the day, very cringy, go check it out. I play bagpipes, okay, it's glorious. But realising that Scotland was so inhospitable, Hadrian himself decided to do a trump, and he built a wall, and actually succeeded. In another video, you'll actually see me standing on the remains of Hadrian's Wall, which you can visit to this day. Amazing place, actually. Great, great view. And quite historically significant as well. However, Britain never proved to be the most stable province in the Roman Empire. 
with insubordination and rebellions coming from the army itself, already start to direct the Roman hold over Britain, starting even centuries before the actual collapse of the West Roman Empire. Several sub-empires, like the Gallic Empire and the Britannic Empire, were even formed within the boundaries of the Roman Empire. In times marked by huge ethnic reshuffling, Saxon and Irish attacks started plaguing the British Isles, and so Roman troops started withdrawing from the northern areas in 402, and total abandoning of the province by 408 AD. As we can see, initial contact between European civilization and Britain didn't go quite as smooth as it could have, especially considering the great Roman war machine itself not even being able to subjugate the country for a very long time. After that point, Britain will be busy with itself for quite a long time, having Anglo-Saxon migration into the country, as well as Viking raids and everything whatnot. However, the next biggest impactful moment between Europe and Britain would be the invasion of the British Isles by the Normans. The initial reasons for the invasion of Britain were a bit complicated. In a boiled down simplified form, there is this dude called Edward the Confessor, who succeeded the British throne. Edward the Confessor himself was supported by the Normans, a group of Vikings who had settled with specific protections and rights in the northern areas of France, and who had become quite powerful by this time. However, Edward the Confessor died in 1066, and so Duke William of Normandy claimed the British throne based on a promise Edward the Confessor had given him, apparently, due to support. However, Britain also had troubles coming from the north of Europe in Norway, where King Holrada invaded the north of England in September of 1066. Native British forces moved up north to counter the invasion, and they actually succeeded in defending the island from the Norwegian king, severely diminishing their forces, while also suffering a huge amount of casualties. However, while that was happening, the Normans themselves were planning a naval invasion and landed successfully. After that, the British forces had to rush from the north of England back down to the south of England to meet the Normans in fatal battle. The Normans crushed the British army in open battle, and King Harold, the current ruler of England, was killed on the battlefield. Some sources say he was killed by an arrow shot to the eye. A bit like that. After that, and few other squabbles as well, which with rebellions lasting up until the 1070s, the Normans officially claimed control of the British Isles, and Duke William of Normandy was henceforth known as William the Conqueror, and such, the first true proper British dynasties of at least the English throne were formed. Now this video will be long enough already, and you don't need to worry though, because I have still got plenty of subjects to go. We are not even close to where we are today. I mean, this wasn't really a Brexit, this is really a Brex... Uh, how would I say it? Remigration? Nah, you can't. You can't immigrate Britain to a thing. Anyway, it's just saying that Europe influenced Britain more during this time frame than Britain influenced Europe, because let's face it, Britain may have a bad infrastructure today, but back in that day it was non-existent, so not much came from Britain back in that day, except with a bit of tin, which made it a quite sought over region by many larger powers of the day. With that though, I hope you have a lovely day whenever you're watching this, and if you are interested in seeing more of this, Feel free to do the usual shenanigans like liking, sharing, especially sharing because I want to get out there, and subscribing, and all the usual shits as well because, hey, you have been watching the Mr. Epic Show, the semi educational show with me, your host, wearing a silly cape for some reason. Special thanks to my Patreons as well, you make me inflate my ego a bit more, and my belly because I can occasionally buy a kebab or two. So, thank you very much, have a lovely day, everybody, and stay epic. Because then I will see ya.